I'm joined here today with uh, Pavel. Uh, Pavel, thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for agreeing to be here. Um, thank you. And uh, first off, um, let's let's cut to the chase. So that, that way we, we get the, the band aid off. Uh, let's go through your dossier. Uh, for those who don't know who you are, who, who you are. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, in terms of your Krav Maga and uh, journey and, and everything else. Uh, it, it's funny, I, I always, me too, I always use the word journey when I speak about uh, Krav Maga, about uh, you know, fighting in general. So my journey began in, uh, in the army. Um, I, I was drafted uh, to teach, uh, how do you say, uh, physical uh, ed education to be a physical instructor. And uh, somehow I was lucky enough to be chosen to do a Krav Maga instructor course. And I just, uh, I, I fell in love. I, I always, since I was a little kid, I wanted to, uh, to do martial arts. And, and my mother never allowed it, uh, allowed it uh, for, to me, for me. So I just, you know, it was a dream come true. And, um, since that course, all I wanted to do is to master uh, fighting, master uh, Krav Maga. And after my service, I found out that uh, in the city I live in, in, in Kfar Saba, um, uh, there's a gym of uh, Zev's, Zev, Zev Cohen's gym. And I came, came here, I, I came in the door after like one month since I was. Uh, uh, a civilian, and ever since that day, I was uh, doing Krav Maga. Fantastic. So that's, that's that's my journey. Yeah. Uh, I have other other journeys in martial arts, in particular. But uh, if you want to me to elaborate, hmm. and when did you start that Krav Maga journey? In terms of the the age, what, what what age were you when you first got? That? I was uh, I was nineteen. I was okay. nineteen. Yeah. Um. So it's wow. It's uh wow. Seventeen years. Okay. Okay. Seventeen years. Yeah. Wow. A lot of time. And um, did you did you take a gap at all after uh, leaving the army and joining Zev's gym, or you just straight away went? No, I, I need to find something uh, to keep training and uh, keep getting better at. I, I came, I came uh, to train one month after I was uh, released from the army. Mm. And, uh, after about six months, I went to uh, work in the in the states. I was uh, like a, you know, uh, it's called a camp counselor. I was working uh, in summer camp, mm -hmm. so I was there for uh, like four or five months. I don't remember. And the moment I came back, I was just dedicated to train. I was training uh, five times. Uh, a week, I was going uh, by bus. I didn't have a car then. I was going by bus to train in uh, Tel Aviv. It's a, it's another uh, place that uh, Zev was teaching there, and I was training on Fridays and instructor training. And every opportunity I had, mm. I was training, 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 doing all the techniques. And at some point, at some point, I I I, I felt like I need to improve my uh, I don't know my my striking abilities. Mm. So uh, I met an uh, amazing, amazing trainer uh, uh, who worked for Zev. His name is Mickey, Mickey Newman. And I, I began going and taking private lessons uh, with him um, daily, uh, not, not daily, excuse me, once a week. And uh, I began taking boxing also seriously because I, I saw the benefits. Mm for self-defense. I saw the benefits for the self-confidence, self-esteem. Mm. And uh, I was, at some point, I was doing kickboxing. At some point, I, I added uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. After a couple of years, I began doing, uh, you know, uh, wrestling. But everything I did was to understand better uh, Krav Maga, to understand better self-defense. And uh, basically, since I was teaching and being a trainer, I thought how to improve the, the, the 
the product, our product, mm -hmm. how to make it more uh, fun, mm -hmm. how to make it more relevant for what we're trying to achieve uh, in, in self-defense. That's, that's the journey. And basically, every time I was feeling like I, I'm in a high level, I was, I was feeling that I was in a high level. I moved to a place when I was a beginner all over again, mm. every couple of years. And that, that process for somebody who teaches martial arts, I think it's crucial mm. always to push your boundaries. And, your, and it, it sounds like a cliche, but you can never forget what it's like to be a student. You can never say, okay, I'm on the top. I, I, I know everything I need, it needs to, to know. Uh, always, you have to evolve. If you're not evolving, if you're not moving forward, basically you're, you're, you're moving backwards. And that's, that's the problem, I think, uh, with a lot of uh, people who do uh, martial arts in general, not only Kal Maga. Mm. No, that's a very... Um insightful and very pure way of looking at it i i, I like that that's uh, uh it keeps it keeps you humble uh th that journey yeah uh, you, you know what i thought about it um uh, what keeps you humble is getting punched in the face mm. uh in training again it sounds like a cliche mm. but it's funny as as you um when you train in a contact sports or in a martial arts, when, when um, it's a competition, it's a competition. We're not a team. We're not friends. I'm coming here to fight with you or spar with you, uh, but, but hard sparring session. So you're going to always hit a wall. Hmm. And hit it, hitting that wall is uh, uh, it's like a mirror in front of your face because you see your reaction to that wall because you're afraid you're surprised because you're uh um i forgot the word in english you're used to being the the top dog and suddenly you're not you're the, you you see the reality you can't lie to yourself it's in your face and now what you do what are you going to do are you going to continue training you're trying to get over that wall oh go through that wall or are you backing down so for me all of those um how do you say uh ring sports muay thai boxing uh are great analogies for uh your character in a street fight mm -hmm. analogies again you can you, you can you can never know what you're going to do in a in a street fight until you are in a street fight but it's a good analogy because you see who you are, truly who you are in the ring. That's very important. I like that. I like that. Um, now, obviously, um, you've probably given this more thought than most, most people, uh, given uh, your journey. But what are your Krav Maga aspirations uh, moving forward? Um, uh, I think we can already guess what they are, but uh, what, what, are, what are they moving forward? Again, um, I don't want to sound, uh, how do you say, uh, presumptuous. Is that a word? I said it yeah, correctly. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. Okay. But I, I, I wanted, I, I really want to be a part of the evolution of the system. I'm not saying I, I know the answers or I know the way, but I have an idea of what, what works for me and for my students. And I want to be a part uh, of the evolution. Mm. Um, even though I'm not a master or a grandmaster, or even, uh, you know, I'm not a high level expert. But I want to be a part of the evolution of the system because there are a lot of things that can be done to improve our uh, system and actually to improve our product. If you look at it as a businessman or a gym owner or whatever. Hmm. Um, so that's, that's my uh, aspirations. 
Right. And um, in terms of like every instructor has their own teaching style, you know, some people like being a, a student's friend, other people like being a little bit more of a hard ass, if you want to call it that. Uh, other people like being um, more technical and only technical focused. Uh, what is your teaching style? Like uh, when you've got your students in front of you, how do you think your, your students would uh, describe your teaching style? A really good question. Uh, well, I don't know how they would describe, but I have an idea what I want to, uh, how I would, would like them to uh, describe my uh, teaching style. Um, uh, when you come to train, I'm trying to figure out who you are. Um, what are you afraid of? What are uh, your insecurities? And I'm, I'm trying to help you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you to your limits, but I'm, I'm going to do it in a pace that it's suitable for you. Hmm. And um, there's a... Um, there's a sentence in KMG, and Eyal uses it a lot, that uh, the instructor, by the way, I, 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 I dislike the, the word instructor. I prefer trainer or uh, teacher. Instructor, you, you, you can buy a DVD and you, there you have it. You, you have an instructor, online instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, the, the phrase is, uh, we are a channel to the source. And from my point of view, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a channel to the source. Again, I, I didn't invent anything. The, the mm -hmm. techniques that uh, we teach are, are taught to us by somebody else. But the way you deliver, the way you teach, uh, it's up to you. And it's up to you to deliver the, the knowledge in, in the correct method for that specific person. Hmm. And that's, that's the difference between a teacher, a trainer, and an instructor. Instructor has um, a knowledge and he just, uh, you know, delivers it uh, to whoever. Uh, trainer needs to understand the person in front of him, his needs, his insecurities, his uh, fears sometimes. Mm. You, come, you come across a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot of times uh, you see uh, students with no uh, horrible backgrounds, horrible stories that made them come to your lesson, to our lesson, and you you, you need to adjust your behavior as a teacher. You have to adjust the, your language, your tone of voice sometimes to that specific person. That's that's uh, teaching somebody. Training somebody is, is a form of art. Yeah. Um, I like that. that that's, um, the, I think sometimes some people get caught up too much in uh, the, maybe the ego or the, uh, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in front of the class, I'm instructing, and uh, maybe we don't, some people don't uh, connect emotionally with, with that student in front of them, what, what that student's actually going through. So that's, uh, it, it's good to hear you say that uh, as well. Um, that, that's, that's something like I've said, always thought of. Like I said before, the best way to keep you humble hmm. is to get hit in the face or kicked in the head uh, on a daily basis. Yeah. Then you understand, okay, you're, you're good, but you're not that good. Hmm. There's always somebody better than you, younger than you, uh, tougher than you. Mm. And then you put everything into proportions. Plus, and that's something that um, a lot of people who get into teaching, uh, Krav Maga or whatever, uh, don't understand. They don't see the business side. Mm. Um, so you may dislike somebody personally, but this is a business. Mm. And you're giving service to that person. His pain, you, uh, I don't know how much is it in, uh, in uh, Australian dollars, but insane am uh, amount of money for one hour of private lesson. Uh, 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 a pay, a pay, no, nobody would pay you that much. 
give him the service he deserves. Give him a, your 120%. Mm. Be a professional. Yeah. We have to be professional every time we're uh, on, uh, on the mat. Mm. Now, do you do a lot of private lessons or uh, you do a mixture of classes and private lessons yourself? Well, uh, actually, during all the crisis now with uh, COVID, mm. so I'm, I'm teaching a lot of private lessons. Okay. Um, hopefully, um, we'll see um, more people going back to group sessions and... Yep. Uh, yeah, you host, you're, you are hosting group sessions at the moment, but is, are the numbers low? Or? Are, are relatively low to what we're used to. We had a very, um, let's say, let's call it a very humble gym in uh, Kfar Saba for years. A very humble gym. and It, it, it was always packed. Hmm. Always packed. Uh, huge numbers for such a small uh, place. And from all ages, hmm. different ages, from uh, age of five till the age of 85. Hmm. And all of this, um, all this crisis really hurt us. But, uh, you know, we're, we're not afraid. We're, uh, we're going to survive. Hmm. Yeah, we've got to adapt and overcome. Um, now, now, do you train with your family at all? Well, it's funny. Uh, my my son. Um, actually, I made a mistake. I took I took him when he was like uh, three. I took him uh, to a sparring session. I go to a, a pretty, uh, yeah. you know, a pretty rough gym. Yeah. And he he was terrified. Terrified, I, I I had to stop. I had to uh, you know uh, hug him, and tell him, listen, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's my friends, it's okay. And I think uh, he, he was really afraid for for a lot, uh, a lot of time from um, uh, physical contact, mm -hmm. physical sports. And now he's he's almost seven, and now suddenly, like two months, three months ago, actually in the in the beginning of the crisis. Mm -hmm. He really got into it. He always wants me to hold the pads for him. Maybe he became a little bit more assertive, a little bit more aggressive. Mm. So now he trains. He tries and trains in a in a class I teach for uh, for uh, youngsters, and he's uh, he's having fun in the in the meantime. So mm. I I teach him. My my, my small daughter, um, she's not into fighting a little bit, and uh, my wife. Uh, no, my wife, but it's, she's too gentle. Too gentle. Yeah, I, I, my, I've got the same problem with my wife. Um, both my daughters do it, but um, yeah, my wife is, yeah, she, yeah not interested. <laughs> um, now, in regards to uh, any hobbies outside of Krav Maga, uh, have you got any, any hobbies that you care to share? I have, first of all, again, I, I love, I love martial arts. I love, uh, like I told you, boxing, Muay Thai, mm. uh, wrestling. Again, I, I, I do it to evolve as a fighter, as a, a trainer, as a businessman, as a club mm. owner, whatever. But it's also also fun. I, I, I love it. Mm. Uh, other hobbies, I, I, I wish I had the time. I'll, I need to create time to learn how to play chess really like learn professionally how to play chess mm -hmm. or uh, pick up uh, you know, a, a guitar or drums or whatever, learn how to play. Excellent. And um, well, unfortunately I can't do either. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that on yet. So don't worry. Um, now, do you find uh, Krav Maga therapeutic for you? You know what? I remember seeing that question, and it's it's, it's something I tell to all my um, teenage students. If I had somebody, at, uh, I don't know, who would come to me at the age of 12, 13, 14, and and uh, tell me, 
uh, listen, there's uh, a Krav Maga lesson, come and train, it would change my life for the better. Uh, things that I'm learning today at the age of, uh, I don't know, 35, things that I learned at the age of 28, I would pick up a lot, uh, a lot earlier, a lot uh, younger. Mm. So for me, Krav Maga uh, training and actually even teaching Krav Maga changed me for the better. Uh, I, I was really, uh, throughout my life, I was uh, impatient, uh, intolerant. Uh, for for people mistakes and um, I, I was really uh, quick to anger I was uh, aggravated really easy and today I'm, I'm, I'm in, in a diff different place so it's a lot actually it's a lot because of my wife but uh, it's also Krav uh, Maga in teaching Krav Maga and working every time with the, all day with people yeah Okay. Well, I think maybe you've uh, probably answered the second, que the, the next follow-up question to that, which is, has your love of Krav Maga helped you through a difficult situation? And do you care to share? Like I told you, I, I, uh, I grew up uh, here as a, um, I don't know how to say it uh, in English. There's not a word for it. I, I, I was born in the Ukraine. Hmm. I came to Israel at the age of six uh, with uh, my mother and my grandmother. And, uh, you know, growing up as a foreigner, somebody who looks different, who speaks different, who doesn't uh, really understand the mentality, uh, it's, there's a lot of conflicts. And hmm. through working with people, uh, through martial arts, through uh, self-defense training, Krav Maga, uh, it helped me a lot. It made me a lot more relaxed, a lot more uh, calm and uh, tolerant, tolerant to people. I, I, I wasn't a tolerant person. Hmm. Okay. And um, a question I like asking uh, everyone so far, and uh, at the moment we've, we've got an underlying theme, but... Uh, I won't, I won't tell you what that underlying theme is at the moment. I'll let you answer. Uh, which was your most difficult project or class that you've ever had to, to teach uh, uh, throughout your whole time as in, uh, instructing? A really good question. Um, it's a good question. So. Nowadays, um, I had trouble starting to teach kids, really young kids, age of five and six, because it's, it's, it's a different mentality. Mm. It's a different mentality. It's a different type of setting. Uh, the goals are different than what I'm used to. Mm. Uh, so that was really hard to pick up. But once you understand the purpose, mm. And um, now I'm looking at it from, from a perspective of a, of a father, father for uh, three kids. So I, it's, it, it's easier for me to understand yeah. the mentality of the lesson. Um, other than that, I had a class one time. I was, I was, teaching, the, um, I was teaching in a prison. Uh, the, there was a project to te teach the guards, the correction, to correction uh, officers. And that's a really tough crowd. Mm. That's a really tough crowd. You need to have a lot of patience and uh, be relaxed. Mm. Would you prefer the kids or the prison guards? The kids. The kids. <laughs> the kids. The kids. The kids. <laughs> Well, just so you know, most of the instructors I've uh, interviewed so far, they've all said kids' class is by far one of the most difficult projects they've done. So um, <laughs> it's because, good to know there's an underlying theme there. Yeah, yeah, but because, again, um, a kids' class is, uh, it's like an invest, investment in your future, mm. in your club's future. Hmm. So you have a goal. You want to teach somebody self-defense, practical self-defense, something that he, he can use right now. Hmm. And when you teach 
somebody at the age of five, you're building something from, from really a ground level, which you will see the benefits mm. maybe five years. That's, that's definitely an investment. That's, that's the way I'm, I'm looking at it. Mm. And um, today, uh, it's, it's fun. I'm having fun, actually. Mm. And how long, are your, how long are the classes that you run there, like in, in regards to kids' class and uh, the adult classes that you do? Uh, what's, so, what's the... uh, kids' classes are 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, 45 minutes long. And uh, teenage and adult classes are one hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Um, and those ad ad adult classes, do you have like, for instance, a sparring session after that as well, or in a separate class or is it, or, or do you just say, oh, a certain day you're doing sparring? Or... Every lesson uh, has to end with uh with um it's not gonna sound good uh it, it, it with uh violence or simulation of violence again i'm not, i wouldn't use the word to a beginner mm. but every person has to feel stress has mm. to feel pressure and again there's a big difference uh pressure from physical uh how do you say it? physical training yeah, you're tired. Yeah, or that uh, pressure when you feel like you're you're afraid, mm. and when you're afraid, then it becomes it's interesting, and then it becomes impactful. The mm. lesson becomes important. Mm. Okay, that's that's if you want to change somebody's life, put them in that uh, deep water mm. again according to his abilities, according to his uh, level of advancement. Mm. But he needs to feel that. You're behind him, you're, 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 um, you're how do you say? Um, you're going through it with him, you're at his side, but it's his job to get out of that uh, deep water. Yeah. And that's a, a feeling of empowerment mm. that few people, uh, ever feel yeah and um to touch on that what's your favorite drill that you like uh throwing uh throwing up towards the class um well wow, that's a that's a really good question a hard question um you know um uh, when i uh demonstrate something um like a pre-fight situation, what, what, what you would call a monkey dance. It's fascinating uh, for me to see the reaction, different reactions of people. Mm. So I, I would go with that. To really put somebody in, in, uh, in uh, uncon inconvenient, excuse me, inconvenient situation, not physical, not to hit him, but to get in his face, to raise your voice a little bit and see his reaction mm. is go. And when, when you explain to him his reaction and what it means, what he's showing to the attacker, what he transmits to the attacker, and you see that he begins to understand, that's amazing. That's amazing feeling. Mm. Mm. Everything that we do, every scenario that we ever worked on Krav Maga, from my perspective, from my point of view, can be avoided if you act correctly in that moment, of, in that monkey dance, at that beginning, the pre-fight. Mm. If you know how to handle yourself in that situation, you will never throw a punch in your whole life, in real life, I mean. Yeah, yeah, uh, well said. And um, let's move on to the next question, which is, how important is the is KMG um, or the KMG community to you? I I think that uh, without uh, Eyal Yanilo, um, nobody would know uh, what Krav Maga is. Hmm. Uh, I mean, in, in the world, and I think uh, in the past uh, decade, 
Um, he built a community of uh, experts, of high-level instructors, high-level, um, let's call it gym owners, business owners, mm. that are um, continuing to evolve the system. In the last, uh, I think it's been two years already, in the last uh, GIT meeting, uh, I, I came like for, for a day, for a couple of hours, and I sat and I was, uh, well, I was ama amazed of the feedbacks and ideas that people uh, talked about. Mm. And, and uh, I, I've been in that position, I think, since 2010, and to see what happened in eight years, the progression that happened in eight years, in nine years, it's, it's amazing. Mm. It's amazing. Um, okay, thank you for that. And um, in regards to the, um, well, let, let me put it this way, in regards to my next question, what is your most memorable interaction uh, you've had with someone? regarding Krav Maga. You mean in KMG? Yeah, yeah. In uh, interaction, you mean uh, what? Uh, training session, uh, conversation? It could be training session, it could be uh, a mentoring role, it could be um, maybe someone that you look up to yourself. Uh, what's your most? Oh, there, there, there are so many people so many people. Um, first of all, you have Zev. Zev, uh, he, he was my first true martial arts instructor, mm. Krav Maga instructor, and he gave me a lot of knowledge on how to build a lesson, mm. how to uh, teach. Uh, he took me through my first steps, and till this day, he gives me a lot of feedback and a lot of knowledge, uh, especially with the, with the kids. Um, you have Eyal. Eyal, um, every time I needed help, every time I needed uh, somebody to, to give me that uh, fine tuning on how to teach something, uh, he had time for me. He invited me to, to his house. He trained with me, he trained me. Uh, you have a person like uh, John Bullock. Uh, who, during his stay in Israel, he, he, he's been here for like six months or something. He trained with us. And the feedback he had for our gym, for the way we run the business, uh, helped us grow and understand a lot of things. Uh, plus, you know, when, when, when you travel, when you, when you work in this community, you meet all sorts of amazing people. Uh, you know, you had an amazing friend. Um, his name is Elroy. Uh, he passed away, I think, uh, two or three weeks ago uh, yeah. from cancer. Uh, like a huge loss for our community. Mm. Uh, that man, that, that, the amount of uh, respect and uh, generosity he showed me when I was in my beginning, a beginning instructor. My first job was in India. Mm. Um, was just amazed. I was amazed from the uh, respect and, and the kindness he showed me. So there's a lot of, there are probably a lot of more I can I can talk to you about. Hmm. No, and um, touching on that with um, going back to Zev. Um, now, obviously, you had done Krav Maga or, um, in the army. And then you'd gone to Zev's gym. But what was that like from going from the army and then all of a sudden to Zev's gym? Um, did, what, was it straight away a, a smooth transition or were, were, did you find yourself, oh, I need to fix this up, I need to fix this up? And did you find that? It was humbling. Mm. It was humbling. I, I, was, I, I thought I was, uh, I was tough in the army because I was... Uh, I was teaching in, in a very uh, interesting place in the arm. Very interesting place. Uh, um, but coming to the gym 
was really humbling in the beginning because in the army, because of safety reasons, you can't kick to the groin, you can't punch to the head. There's certain restri restrictions. At least they couldn't when I was in the army. Mm. And suddenly I was getting hit in the face. Suddenly, uh, I don't know, a 70-year-old uh, kid kicked me in the, in the balls, in the groin. And it, 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 it was humbling in the beginning, but it, it, it's, it was fun. I wanted, like I told you, I wanted to master mm. the craft. Yeah. And every time I felt like it's difficult, yeah. I knew that I was in the right place. Mm. When it's easy, you should go find yourself a different uh, place mm. because that, it, that's not interesting. It's not interesting. It's easy. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, now, last question, I promise. Um, <laughs> what do you hope that people will take away uh, from Krav Maga? Oh. A lot of things, a lot, a lot of things. I, and again, it, it, like I told you before, it's, it's individual. Mm. Every person, every student takes something that it's, it's important for him. Um, for me, when I teach um, kids, women, adults, I believe in self-confidence and self-esteem. When you're confident, you're not gonna uh, fight over a parking space. Mm. If if uh, if you're confident, uh, if somebody uh, says something about your mother, you're not gonna lose your temper. And if you're confident, even if you're scared, uh, you'll know how to handle yourself and how to defuse the situation. Even if even if, even if you're scared. Mm. So for me, uh, all of this. Uh, you know, teaching people how to fight is through physicality, through physical stress, uh, to uh, get uh, somehow to their soul. Mm. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm trying to I do. say? I do, I do, I do. Through that pressure, through that stress, uh, to empower this place, because mm -hmm. that's, this and this actually because that's that's your weapon that's your tools that's your mm. most important tools more than your uh, punch more than your elbow mm. the way you think the way you act under pressure that's that's the most important thing yeah. self-defense i like that okay well pavel um that's all we've got time for in terms of the questions is there anything that you'd like to finish up on uh, before we finish, well, you know what? I I wish all of this situation uh, will end quickly, and uh, you can come uh, to Israel to train with us, or uh, I'll come to Australia to train with you, or we'll 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 meet somewhere in the middle. <laughs> that 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 will be fun. Well, hopefully next year. Uh, next day camp, I'll be there again and uh, I'll Amen. see you. Um, all right, well, uh, Pavel, uh, thank you very much.